ready? Yep, just making sure the live stream is good. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchise. At this time, will all panelists please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices to vibrate or silent. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Again, that's land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Thank you for your cooperation. We are ready to begin. Good morning. Uh, I'm Council Member Francisco Moya, Chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. Uh, I'm, we are, I'm joined remotely today by Council Member uh, Barry Grudenchek. Uh, today, we will hold a public hearing for a rezoning proposal in Queens. But before uh, we begin, I would like to recognize the subcommittee council to review the remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Moya. I am Arthur Ha, counsel to the subcommittee. Members of the public wishing to testify were asked to register for today's hearing. If you wish to testify and have not already registered, we ask that you please do so now by visiting the council's website at www.council.nyc.gov to sign up. Members of the public may view a live stream broadcast of this hearing at the New York City Council website. When called to testify, individuals appearing before the subcommittee will remain muted until recognized by the chair to speak. Applicant teams will be recognized as groups and called first. Members of the public will be called and recognized as panels in groups of four names at a time. When the chair recognizes you, your microphone will be unmuted. Please take a moment to check your device and confirm that your microphone is on before you begin speaking, and I will remind all participants that there will be a slight delay in the unmuting process. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have additional testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider, or if you have written testimony you would like to submit instead of appearing before the subcommittee, you may email it to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number and or project name in the subject line of your email. During the hearing, council members with questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of your participant panel. Council members with questions will be announced in order as they raise their hands, and Chair Moya will then recognize members as they uh, to speak. Witnesses are reminded to remain in the meeting until they are excused by the chair as council members may have questions. Finally, there will be pauses over the course of this meeting for various technical reasons, and we ask that you please be patient as we work through any issues. Chair Moya will now continue with today's agenda item. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, I now open the public hearing on LU 689 and 690 for the 110-40 Sotel Avenue rezoning relating to property in the Corona neighborhood in my district in Queens. Uh, the application uh, includes a zoning map amendment to rezone an R6B zoning district to an R6 district, as well as a zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option ones, uh, utilizing options one and two. If approved, the proposal would facilitate the development of a new six story plus cellar mixed use community facility and residential building, including 25 dwelling units, 2,300 square feet of community facility space at the ground floor, and approximately 6,900 square feet of community facility, uh, uh, facility use at the cellar level. The ground floor would also include 13 uh, accessory residential parking spaces, access through the entrance on Corona Avenue. Uh, and with that, I turn it over um, to our council. The applicant panel for this item will include Richard Lobel, uh, land use council appearing on behalf of the applicant, as well as Amanda Iannotti, also land use council, and uh, Nelson Tuckman and Tom Currow. Nelson Tuckman for the applicant, Tuckman Associates, and project architect, Tom Currow. Panelists, if you have not already done so, please accept the unmute request in order to begin to speak. Thank you. Uh, but before we begin, I'd just like to take this opportunity to uh, recognize uh, Council Members Rivera and uh, Council Members uh, Richards uh, for joining us here today. Thank you. And Council, can you please uh, administer the affirmation? 
panelists, please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee in an answer to all council member questions? I do. I do. do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are in receipt of your slideshow presentation for this proposal. Uh, when you are ready to present the slideshow, please say so, and it will be displayed on the screen for you by our staff. Uh, slides will be advanced for you when you say next. Uh, please note that there might be a slight delay in both the initial loading and the advancing of the slides. And finally, before we begin, please uh, make sure you state your name uh, and affirmation uh, once again for the record. Uh, you may begin. Good morning, Chair Moya, members of the subcommittee, Richard Lobel of Sheldon Lobel PC. And with Amanda Iannani of my office, we are uh, here today for 110-40 Saltel Avenue. Uh, joining us, of course, are Nelson Tuckman, the applicant, uh, as well as Tom Curro, the project architect. Uh, and good morning, Chair Moya. Good morning. Um, so next, please. Here's the cover page of the Saltel Avenue rezoning. The building that can be seen actually uh, in the background is uh, a rendering of the Rigo Park Health Center. This is uh, an, the, an applicant controlled site. And so when this corner lot became available, uh, the applicant discussed with us the possibility of a minor rezoning here in order to effectuate some additional program space and to add some housing and uh, in addition to inclusionary housing uh, to this block. Next slide. So what are the goals of the rezoning? To summarize, the proposed actions here are a zoning map amendment to rezone Queens block 1972, parts of lot 27 and 28 as the proposed project area from an R6 to an R6B zoning district, uh, to an R6 zoning district from an R6 and RB, R6B zoning district. It's an extension of an existing R6 zoning district. This is much like many of the rezonings that we've done of late, particularly in Queens, kind of a corrective rezoning, and we'll see that on the map in a little bit. Uh, there's also, of course, a text amendment to establish the proposed project area as a mandatory inclusionary housing area with which the council is very familiar. Uh, typically uh, in the application, options one and two are designated. Uh, the proposed development to result from this would be a new six story plus cellar mixed use community facility and residential building with a total floor area of approximately 30,848 square feet, an FAR of 3.63 and 25 dwelling units, 21 bedrooms and five two bedrooms. Uh, formerly, there was a component of studios that was to be built on the site. Uh, after further consultation with the council member, as well as the community board, the uh, Studios were eliminated and, and one larger one bedrooms were created. So we're really happy about that. Um, and of course the development site here is 11040 Saltel Avenue uh, being on the corner, uh, you'll see on the map of, uh, of Saltel uh, in, in this location. There's 13 ground floor parking spaces that are provided, which um, are, uh, which satisfy zoning. And um, the applicant would anticipate compliance with option one which would provide six affordable housing units. Next slide, please. So you can see here is just a, uh, in the circled area is the area of the proposed rezoning. Um, what to notice about this, you can see the existing R6B on the corner of Saltel and Corona Avenues. Uh, and the R6B actually kind of uh, encroaches on the upper, northwest corner of the block, the remainder of that northern portion of the block is R6. So all this does is merely take that bold line currently appearing perpendicular to Flushing Meadow Park and to shift it uh, to, the, to the west in order that the entirety of the northern part of the block is covered by R6. Uh, an easier way to look at this is through the tax map. Next slide. And so you can see here in, in close up the, uh, the R6, which is now going to be um, encompassing that small rectangular portion of the block uh, as, a, as an R6 from an R6B. Next slide. So 
So from here, you can see really the layout of the local area. This is the land use map. Of course, you have the six story existing uh, nursing care facility uh, midway down Corona Avenue. And then you have the potential site here, which is uh, on the corner encompassing these two lots that are part of the proposed development. Uh, I would note that the opportunity for Regal Park to be able to, to encounter a property like this and to be able to provide office space and services within that is just so invaluable for them. As we've discussed in other areas of the application, this will free up space to, among other things, allow for um, a, uh, a dialysis center to be potentially placed on the existing facility, thus making it easier for current patients and residents to be able to use the facility. Next slide. Here we just have some pictures of the development site taken from certain angles. Um, you can see the, uh, the key in the lower right. Um, and we just provided one page of pictures so that you can kind of see uh, Corona Avenue and, and the um, project area, how it interacts with the surrounding area. That corner building, which is the development site, uh, would be demolished uh, and the, um, the new building would go up, uh, much like in the initial uh, rendering. So if you can page through the next slide and some additional slides as well, you'll see we start to page through the project plans. So um, here you see the, just the basic layout of the, of the property, the cellar, first floor plans, and residential floor plans. The cellar floor plan would include um, roughly 6,600 square feet of community facility. I'd ask if you could actually just start paging through a little bit more rapidly, I can just discuss some of the uh, zoning and other calculations. So the ground floor as discussed has 13 parking spaces. Uh, and then the second through sixth floors contain residential units uh, varying between one and two bedrooms, 21 bedrooms and five two bedrooms. Uh, further, the ground floor uh, maintains in addition to parking a residential lobby and access to the community facility cellar space. So, um, you know, in, in basic rendering here, you can see essentially what the character of the building would be. Um, it's going to be very much look, uh, you know, much like the existing facility and other local community facilities in and around this block. Um, we've had conversations as council member Moya can attest to with the council member in whose district this property lies. And uh, we've had some very productive conversations with regards to use of the community facility space. Uh, on behalf of the entire applicant team, we'd like to thank council member Moya uh, for making himself available for many of these conversations uh, it's been a really iterative process. Um, you know, Nelson can tell you that he's excited about the opportunity to really take what amounts to uh, administrative space at the existing facility and to, uh, to allow that to sit in this new building while at the same time uh, being able to generate some housing and affordable housing. And importantly, some community facility space with potential users whom we've already talked to uh, as recently as yesterday. So in conclusion, uh, the entire applicant team is available to answer questions and uh, you know, we value the opportunity to appear before the subcommittee. Thank you, Richard. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, just a couple of questions. Um, just to, to get again on record, uh, can you confirm that you plan to utilize uh, MIH option one? That's correct. We do. Okay. Uh, so you guys went in front of uh, city planning. Uh, last week. How do you respond to the concerns that were raised uh, related to the distribution and the layouts uh, of the units by size? And in particular, like how many square feet in the aggregate are you providing for the uh, one bedrooms, two bedrooms uh, units respectively? And then what would be the range of footage of apartments by bedroom size? So I can go through them again, the, those questions again, if you didn't catch them, but it all deals with the sizing. Sure, I, I, I'd start generally and then to the extent that uh, Amanda, Tom, Tom Kerr is available? Yeah, okay, hi. Okay, yeah. um, I'd start generally just by saying that um, we modify the plans, the illustrative plans to respond to some of the commissioner's comments, uh, in, including the discussion with regards to the unit sizes. So Tom, I don't know, maybe with more particularity, you can just discuss uh, the, some of the changes that were made. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to calculate some floor areas for you, but uh, basically we, 
we uh, redesigned the apartment somewhat to achieve the uh, one, two bedroom on each, each floor as well as four, four one bedrooms. Uh, you know, we, we're dealing with a, a set parameter of, of space. And so, uh, you know, the apartments, the one bedrooms are all distributed equally in, in size based on the, the, the maximum footprint that we can achieve on, on, on these lots or, or on this lot. So, uh, so specifically, can yeah. you give me the breakdown of the breakdown, size of the, the, size of the apartments? apartment units and then also what is the square footage of the actual bedroom size? Okay, well, the, a, a typical one bedroom uh, is, uh, just give me one second. Yep. Sorry, sorry, I don't have that handy, but uh, it'll only take a second. Sorry, Tom. Is uh, 775 square feet. Okay. Uh, 700 eight, and, and what was that? I'm sorry? 775 for, for the one bedroom apartment. Okay. okay. The, the actual bedroom in that apartment is 190 square feet. Okay. The, the two bedroom apartment, uh, which is typical on each floor, comes out to 1,282 square feet. And it has a master bedroom that is... Uh, 317 square feet. Okay, so 300. I mean, yeah. What was the what was the size? I'm sorry. Uh, the master bedroom are the two. Yeah, the master bedroom 1200 and what did I say? Uh, 1282 12, was the square footage for the two bedroom, right? Sorry, the, master, the master bedroom is 328. 328. Got it. And uh, Richard, just so I'm, um, I, I heard you correctly, it's all now just one bedrooms and two bedrooms that are going in there, correct? No studios. Correct. Right? Okay. Correct. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think one of the great things about the application is you look at those unit sizes and they're big. Um, you know, we do, we do a lot of applications with studios ones and twos um, to be able to get up to, you know, 775 and 1200 on average for ones and two bedrooms. Um, it's, uh, I think it's a well-conceived project in that regard. Okay, uh, moving along, let's go and talk about the community uh, facility. Can you confirm uh, the layout of the community facility uh, uses? So is there uh, any portion of the site that is being utilized for the dialysis center? Uh, is one for the community center or whatever organization would come in? Uh, occupying the whole community facility space. Like, let's talk about that a little bit. Sure. So, um, again, to put it on the record, so the opportunity here for the applicant, uh, and there was some flux with regards to planning for the community facility pay space, and that the applicant was uh, was conceivably going to use more of that for their own program. But what essentially happened was the ability of the applicant to offload some administrative and back office space to the new building, allow, frees up space in the existing facility to allow for, among other things, uh, a dialysis center. Uh, with that, the applicant now ends up with roughly 6,600 square feet of contiguous community facility space in the cellar of this building. Um, so uh, again, uh, you know, uh, with the uh, council member's knowledge, um, the applicant is engaged in conversations with Queens Community House uh, and so there was a discussion with regards to the quality of the space. And so there's been certain further discussions internally in the applicant team with regards to uh, beautification of that space and actually making it uh, you know, even more user-friendly for any potential applicant, but especially you know, in this case uh, for Queens Community House. So um, while of course we are in the um, early stages of those discussions, uh, the applicant here is you know, now has this contiguous community facility space on a relatively um, you know, well-populated corner to be able to offer somebody who can then offer uh, programs to the community. Thank you. Um, and also, how much uh, of the square footage is allowed uh, above what is uh, proposed on the site for this project? And so so the, the total FAR for an R6 development site with um, 
with uh, inclusionary house with inclusionary housing and community facility is a maximum FAR of 4.8. So a 3.6 is uh, permissible through um, you know just as a standard um, uh, residential square footage. Um, and actually, I, yeah. So the an R6 has a has 3.6 for quality housing uh, square footage, and then a 4.8 in the maximum R6 as a non-contextual district. The 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 cap and again, Richard. Sorry, you said the maximum for an R6 is a 4.8. Correct is a four point. Okay. Right. So the so here the applicant is proposing a three point six three. Uh, that would be in a six story building. So it's a you know it's it basically satisfies their program, particularly here because there is a full cellar that can be utilized of greater than six thousand square feet. So um, so yeah, that's I mean the current proposal is uh, I think it tops out at roughly thirty thousand eight hundred square feet. Um, so we you know we we exceed the um, you know, the 3.6 FAR, which is available to uh, quality housing residential uh, and with inclusionary uh, just slightly. Okay, thanks, Richard. Um, last question here. Um, so with all, all of the uh, uh, community facility coming in with the residents, uh, how will the different groups, uh, residents and community facility users access parking? Right, so um, I, I mean, Tom, I don't know if you just want to talk briefly about the functioning of the parking. I know it's it's accessible from the ground floor. There's 13 spaces. There's um, there's uh, availability to to enter the parking area for drop offs. But Tom, could you talk about that for a minute? Yeah, sure. Uh, access to the parking well is primarily through the uh, the residential elevator lobby, which uh, is connects the uh, residential floors directly down to uh, the parking. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. Uh, yeah, to the parking level. So, uh, so there's no other, there's no other access uh, from any other part of the building to get to that, that parking except for the residential units and from the, from the sidewalk if you were to walk right in through the overhead door. But otherwise those 13 spaces are, are dedicated for the uh, the residential. Okay, I think we have to talk a little bit more about that. Um, if we're bringing in a community center, uh, sort of the size of that, the parking spaces that are coming in, um, you know, we'd have to have some flexibility here. Yeah, council member, we're happy to look at that as a team and, and talk to you more. Great, uh, that's it for me. Um, but before I turn it over to uh, any of our council members who may have questions, I just want to acknowledge that council member Levin and council member Lansman uh, have also uh, joined us here today. Um, so with that, uh, I now invite any of my colleagues who may have any questions uh, for the applicant, um, just please raise your hand and uh, we will uh, call on you. Uh, Arthur, do we have any council members? Chair, I see no members with questions at this time. Great. Uh, there being no uh, further questions, uh, the applicant panel is excused. Uh, thank you very much uh, for coming here and uh, presenting here with uh, us today. And I'm sure uh, we're going to be talking uh, a lot between now and uh, our vote. So thank you all for, for being here. Uh, have a great day. And, Thanks, Chair. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, now, Council, uh, are there any members of the public uh, who wish to testify on uh, Sotel Avenue uh, rezoning application? Yes, Chair Moya, there are uh, two public witnesses who have signed up to speak uh, as of now. For members of the public here to testify, please note again that witness panels will be called in groups. Uh, as you hear your name being called, uh, please stand by and prepare to speak when acknowledged by the chair. Please note panelists, uh, once you have completed your testimony and answered any council member questions, you will be removed as a group uh, and may continue to view the live stream broadcast, uh, which can be accessed from the council's website. We will now hear from the first panel, which will be Avi Gross and Theo Chino. The first speaker will be uh, Avi Gross. Starting time.
So before we do that, uh, I just want to remind the members of the public uh, that you will be given uh, two minutes to speak. Uh, so please do not begin until the Sergeant at Arms uh, has started the clock. Starting time. Avi, you may begin. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Council Member Moya. Um, I just have a couple of quick comments. Um, I think the idea of affordable housing and the project as it was presented really sounds great. Except that if, let's say, 50% of those units that are affordable are supposed to, that are supposed to go to the public end up, in fact, going to family and friends of those who are conducting the lottery, I don't think that really serves the public interest. And unfortunately, this isn't some abstract allegation. This is something which there are thousands of documents proving that this is what happens in affordable housing. And uh, specifically with this particular property, I, I'd like to alert you to um, a couple of questionable things based on the documents on ACRIS. Um, Calgaris Alford appears to be the original owner of this property in 1982. There's no understanding of how he came into possession of this property. I think uh, it's important to understand that it's, it's it, you know, usually there's some kind of track record where you could see how someone became the owner. Other than that, um, some of the signatures don't match. In other words, the same person with the same name is signing, but the signatures on the deeds are different. The handwriting, which is problematic. Uh, the name Raquel Lombila is misspelled on multiple deeds. Um, these are all things that concern me. Also, the fact that Peter Poon, which is uh, an architecture firm, um, is acquiring property and then taking out a mortgage to give it to Tuckman and Associates, which is a real estate company. That's really not the way it works. It's usually the other way around. The real estate developer is the one buying the property and then it hires the architecture firm. I'm expired. So thank you, Avi. These are all concerns I have. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you for raising these concerns. Will you look um, into this? We will do that. Thank you. You promise. With I, Abby, I live four blocks away. I promise you, I will look into it. All right. The next. Thank you. The next speaker will be Theo Chino. Starting time. Hello, um, uh, Councilman Moya. I'm, call I'm calling uh, in regard of the inclusionary zoning portion of it. Uh, the problem is inclusionary zone has been used by, uh, like Avi said just before, to give housing to people who really do not deserve it. And so basically we need to have an investigation going with HPD to look at how HPD is doing the lottery, how HPD is organizing thing, because we have found, it, and it is not the job of the regular citizen to go and do the job of the FBI, the NYPD, the Justice Department, and to do all that. That's not what the tenant association is about. It is your job to call on the investigative power to help us say there is something going wrong. Right now, we're doing all of that. And we're also putting our life at risk because we don't know what we could find when we uncover things. So, I am against, right now, I am going to look at every Leo project and be against it as long as there is the word inclusory zoning, because that is to give upper middle class kind of a cash rich, low middle class, upper middle class person access to housing that they shouldn't be having. It is meant for low income people who have problem. And that is why I am against the project. It is not my job to do that, but I'm doing it because I am affected by the malfeasance of HPD, like many thousands of residents here. And we're going to start to get together in a tenant association, in a groupment of tenant association to do basically the job of the council to ask for the investigation. Thank you for your time. And I hope that you will ask for an investigation because I'm not hearing anything for the last months and a half we've been testifying like this going over and over and over. It's really mind boggling, thank you. 
Thank you, Theo. Thank you for your uh, testimony today. Um, thank you again. Uh, if there are any council members uh, that have uh, any questions for this panel, please indicate by using the raised hand button. Um, Arthur, do we have any council members who wish to ask any questions? No, Chair Moya, there are no uh, council member questions for the panel at this time. Great. There being uh, no more questions for this panel, uh, the witness panel is now excused. Uh, council, uh, do, do we have another panel coming up? If there are any other members of the public who wish to testify on LU numbers 689 and 690 for the 11040 South Bell Avenue rezoning proposal, please press the raise hand button now. Uh, Chair, the meeting will stand at ease briefly while we check uh, for members of the public. Chair, there are no uh, additional members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Thank you. There being uh, no other members of the public who wish to testify on LU uh, numbers 689 and 690 for the Sotel Avenue rezoning, uh, the public hearing is now closed. That concludes today's business. And I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, the subcommittee council, and of course, uh, the great uh, land use staff, uh, our council, uh, Arthur, thank you very much for being a great co-pilot on this one again, as always. And to the Sergeant at Arms, uh, thank you uh, both for uh, all the great work that you're doing today. Uh, this meeting is uh, hereby adjourned.